Beard. From the Fans Talk Podcast family at fanstalkpodcast.com, this is episode 271 of Fans Talk Pro Wrestling, and tonight we're talking Money in the Bank results and Fallout, plus a bit of TNA as we head into Slammiversary. <laughs> uh, with us tonight is me, I'm Joe, and we have Nick. Say hello, Nick. What's up? Thank you to those of you who have download or downloading and streaming the show. Uh, Patreon.com slash fans talk. You can pledge a few dollars a month our way. It's the most direct way you can tell us that you appreciate the conversation we're having each and every week. Uh, it helps keep the lights on for the show and helps us create more shows for you. Uh, so, Nick, looking at Money in the Bank, uh, overall, how did you feel about this show? I thought it was really good. I I can't say I went in with high expectations, but yeah, it, it totally exceeded my expectations. I, even if I was hot on the show, it probably would have done the same. Yeah, um, I thought it was a good show. I missed the kickoff match, I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Um, but very surprised that R-Truth beat Barrett. Um, I liked when, you know, the go-home Raw, I liked when Truth came out like he was in the ladder match. And said he was ready. He's got over his fear of heights, and he's gonna he's gonna win the Money in the Bank case. And they're like, and Kane's like, "You're not even in the match." He's like, "Oh, yeah, my bad." And he just yeah. leaves. Like, hilarious. That's how I feel they should be using Truth uh, if they're gonna keep him face. Um, like that weird quirky thing. I like that. Yeah, I definitely like how they carried that over to Raw, where he comes out thinking that he's gonna be commentary on the match, and Gabriel's. You realize you're in this match, right? Can you talk about Willis? And then he has to climb in and gets clobbered by Barrett. I, I love that. But yeah, I, I can't say I wasn't expecting an R-Truth win because I'm, Barrett, it, he's kind of in a rut now. He's He gets these the, the titles, the accolades, and then he jobs to everybody for a while. It's, it's become Barrett's thing, sadly. But um, yeah, I didn't watch the match either, but... Yeah, I, I, I am kind of interested in King Barrett versus King What's Up. Yeah, that, uh, that'll that be interesting. It gives them both something to do. And maybe mm-hmm. it'll give us a, a new side of our truth and a little depth to King Barrett. I, I miss Bad News Barrett. I, I think that character actually had some depth and had something going for it. But now that he's king and came out with a stupid little outfit, ugh, it's a little rough for me. I wish he would just adopt the first name again, but yeah, I, I don't really have a preference between King and Bad News, but I definitely prefer Wade, which is weird because Wade is a doofy fucking name. Oh, yeah. Especially if you put Dwayne in front of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, as you're saying it, you know, mentioning his first name, I'm like, what? what is his first name? Like, it's <laughs> bad that I forgot. Um... Then again, I still am. Si- I don't like Neville. I like Adrian Neville. I, yeah, just because they're like, oh, Neville jumped off the top rope. Well, yeah, you say Cena too, but it doesn't mean you're dropping John. Right. It's his freaking name, in and out of the ring. Um, but anyway, our uh, truth and Barrett got got just under six minutes for a pre-show match. I think that's okay. Yeah. Uh, the show began and they immediately kicked it off with money in the bank. And this went almost to 21 minutes. I enjoyed this match a lot. Uh, it kind of had a few lulls, but I think everybody got to hit, hit a cool spot. Uh, you know, Neville hit the red arrow. Orton hit that beautiful RKO on Neville. Uh, Kane got, Kane got some action in there. Reigns obviously did. Kofi did, had some uh, had some moments too, especially with the new day coming out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what were the high points for you? Like uh, the Red Arrow definitely was one. Surprisingly, I I kind of dug that little string of RKOs that Orton threw in there. I I I can't remember anything else that man did in the match, but I do remember those string of RKOs. Um, 
I think that's representative of Orton's career at this point. He just comes out, hits an RKO, and anything else he does is meaningless. But, um, yeah, I like that Kane got some got some spotlight in there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Reigns was definitely a big star of the match. And I, I'm still incredibly surprised that he didn't get that nod, that he didn't pull down the briefcase. But, yeah, as, as far as the match actually ended, I'm kind of okay with it. I'm not okay with Sheamus winning it. Um, I know Sheamus needs a little more momentum uh, since his return. He's just kind of been, well, there's Sheamus. He's a bully. Look at his stupid hair. But, I mean, the fat, Reigns looks strong, and then Bray Wyatt comes out, hits him with Sister Abigail. I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited for Reigns and... And, uh, yeah, Wyatt. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know why I had a brain fart there. <laughs> it took me till the following Raw to get excited, but, yeah, between what happened at Money in the Bank and what happened on Raw, I'm definitely excited. A lot more excited than I have been for Wyatt in a long time. It's the kind of move that I think works fantastically well for the Wyatt character. Just that, why is he there? Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck cares? We're going to get something good. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it. for once, he's he's going after somebody for a specific reason. And it, it may not be, like, the entirety of his of his reasoning. A, you, you get a little bit of a, a break with that because uh, Reigns can't understand the depth of his reasoning. He, he just can't think on that level. But there was a spark. And it was Reigns beating Wyatt to keep his money in the bank. Or, uh, yeah, his spot in the money in the bank match. And to Wyatt, that, that seemed like he was stealing it. I, I like that we finally have a reason instead of, oh, he's just going because of Jericho because it's in his way. He's just going after Ambrose because he's in his way. It's, it's, we, we actually have a storyline here. And I like the last little touch at the end where he mentions Father's Day and he brings up that picture of that that Reigns commercial where he was with his daughter, it reminded me a lot of when CM Punk was singing Happy Birthday to Mysterio's daughter. Yes. And I, I highly enjoyed that moment. And yeah, this moment with Wyatt was pretty enjoyable as well. So I, I'm expecting a lot from this. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, Kofi Kingston, I, I don't know why Garvin picked him. because <laughs> It was because knew. of that internet rumor that um, Lesnar's facing Kingston in Japan. And I think a lot of people were picking Kingston to win because of that. Like, I've seen little screenshots from betting odd sites where Kingston was the most likely person to win after Reigns. I love the fact that people bet on wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. seriously, if I were one of the guys who's booking, I'd go put some money down on somebody, and then I'd book him to win. Yeah, you have to wonder there's some kind of internal policy prohibiting that. Like, if... if, if if you're found out to have done that, you get, I don't know, suspended or fired or what have you. That's why you do it through a third party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Um, not that I've done that. Um, <laughs> what the hell would I bet on besides hockey? Mm-hmm. <sighs> hockey. Um, yeah, so Seamus wins Money in the Bank. He's, I'm really hoping he's the next one to cash in and lose. That's what I'm thinking. Because, I mean, what else? Why? He does not need the title. It's not going to give him more pigment. <laughs> no, um, I'm not... I'm still unsure of when he's going to cash in. Like, I definitely don't expect him to cash in on Rollins. And I'm still not decided on whether... Well, I'll, I'll get to the actual feud later when we talk about it, but... I fully expect him to try and cash in on the face. But, yeah, yeah I... I, I definitely don't see him as the guy, the world heavyweight champion. When there was the big gold belt that you could also relegate people to, yeah, I could see that, but I don't know. I just don't see him there yet. The only the only thing I see as a possibility that could be vaguely interesting, uh, if they can do the story right, Sheamus versus Lesnar. Then it gives Sheamus something to prove. Outside of that, I don't see a purpose for it. Yeah, uh, 
Sheamus versus Lesnar would be an interesting matchup. It would it would definitely be a brawl for sure. Um Yeah, I, I just don't know how that would line up with his with his, with his current strategy, which is basically go in on beat up on smaller dudes because they're not worthy to be in the same ring as him. Uh, Lesnar's definitely not smaller than, she- than Sheamus, so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. know. Maybe, maybe he just comes to that breaking point and says, okay, this is what's going on. Uh, I'm coming after you, Lesnar. You know, slim possibility, but it's there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we should probably move on. Uh Oddly enough, the Divas Championship match got 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. Are you surprised? Kind of. If there is a spot where they'll get more than five minutes, it would be at a pay-per-view. But, um, yeah, it, it is interesting when you look at the times marked down and you see that there are multiple matches that the Divas got more time than. It's, I call that improvement. I call that progress. Um, as far as the match result went, I, I wasn't satisfied with how that went down. But as far as the action during the match went, I thought it was a good match. Yeah, it, it was fun. Uh, I The entire Brie coming out and like showing... I get pulling the stuffing out of her bra. But when she kind of pulled down her trunks to show off her... I don't know what even what you call... The, the right uh, above the pubic mound tattoos, the reverse tramp front, stamp. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say the, the uh, the front tramp stamp. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know why you whatever, have to go you know, so far it, as to empty out your clothing and show off a tattoo when they don't look the fucking same anymore. Like I, I've been on this rant before, but you, you could just look at their faces. It, it, it's it's yeah. obvious, or or the depth of the hair coloring. Yeah, I mean the the, the clothes aren't uh, even I, the, the same anymore. The, t- the general design of the, the clothes fact- is is similar, but yeah, it, it's still you could easily tell those two apart. This shouldn't be working, right? Twin magic should not be a thing anymore. There's no way. Mm. Um, I mean that's that's the flaw with this storyline right there. Um, I'm glad my pick was right. Uh, I didn't like the way it was done, but I knew that's how it was going to be done. So, uh, Paige rallying, trying to rally the troops on Raw the next night to get someone to stand up to Nikki and Brie, and everybody bailed. We'll talk about it later, but that's exciting to me. Um, Do you have any other comments on the Divas Championship match? I Yeah, it's... I don't understand how that match result was allowed to stand because clearly somebody else got involved that wasn't on the card and the referee saw this. Bree proved that she wasn't Nikki right to his face and yet Nikki still comes in and hits the rack attack on Paige and wins the match. Like I get the that he would still retain with a disqualification but it, it, I, I, I don't understand how that was never addressed. The I, I think the loophole here is that I don't think Bree, once the switch was made, the only applicable applicable time that the ref could have lost sight of her long enough for the change to be made, I don't think Bree hit Paige. I would count a so roll-up really as it really wasn't an inter... Uh, you know, I, I get you there, but there wasn't actually a strike. So, you know, I mean, it, it, I could understand how it could be viewed but Maybe. once the ref tried to sort things out yeah i mean it was it was yeah it was a poor ending but yeah i i, I get where you're coming from and i do agree with you nick i'm not trying to not but I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit for the ref i mean the guy yeah. the guy's got a hard job yeah for sure just kidding That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh moving on the intercontinental championship ryback wins via DQ. Or at least... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Big Show won. Ryback walked out with the title. Is that That's how it went, right? Yes. Yeah. Because um, Miz Bi- went after yeah, Big, Big Show. Yeah, Big Show hit the knockout punch, and Miz jumped on Ryback, started attacking with a mic. Oh, so Ryback... Okay, Ryback just did get the win. 
Because if Ryback was the one Miz attacked, then Ryback would be the one who got injured. DQ win goes to Ryback. So yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I could have I could have sworn they said that Big Show won, but because via DQ and that then Ryback won. You know he retained, and that's what we keep track of for our records. Yeah, they um, might have. Lillian kind of sucks at her job, so I don't know. Lillian's pretty terrible. I'm I am not a Lillian fan. No. Uh. I mean, Finkel. Oh, just don't say Howard Finkel. You get that <laughs> eye squint thing going on. Yeah. You're trying to squeeze, eke out a fart. This is for the There's champion. That's the word never ends. It just continues on into infinity. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was something else that she said. Oh, crime time. She cannot say crime time without sounding like she's having a stroke. <laughs> um... Yeah, so, but yeah, Ryback wins, or you are, I mean, despite the fact that you picked Ryback to win, uh, are you okay with the way this match went? I, I'm okay that Ryback retained, I'm, it, it's interesting that, that this is the way it's going, um, I, I was kind of expecting this to be a one and done thing with Ryback proving that, yeah, he can take out people that, bigger than, that are bigger than him, but... Yeah, I, this just wasn't what I was expecting at all. Yeah, it's it, to me it's really awkward because now you've got the Miz involved. Why? It's like it just seems like we've got some guys. Let's throw them together and see what sticks. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 weird, definitely. And Raw didn't make it any better. It, Miz is still getting win, wins over Big Show, so yeah, I I, I don't know how this is going to play out. I was a big fan of Ryback on commentary, though. That it surprised me how much I enjoyed that, especially that line when Big Show throws Miz at him, and Ryback says, oh, "I got Miz all over me." And I, I <laughs> that was that was pretty entertaining. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Moving on. So I've got nothing to say. Okay. <laughs> what actually was the match of the night for me? Kevin Owens versus John Cena. Yep, me too. To me, this match, this was this was a dare I say it, a five star match. Yes, I'm saying that with Cena in it, and Cena did a lot more than the five moves of Doom. Cena has been expanding his repertoire in the ring, which was phenomenal to see. We've been I've been asking for that for a long time. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, of Cena. I mean, he I love the fact that he's you know kind of giving back a bit, you know with. Owens getting that first win clean but like to see the diversity that he's getting into now he's expanding his his wrestling and that's great to see Owens was just top notch oh I mean they they almost they went 19 minutes just over 19 minutes that's almost as long as the money in the bank match that's phenomenal yeah absolutely I I this was also my match of the night too um, I'm even okay with the fact that Cena won because <laughs> they were, they just got such a great chemistry going and yeah, you're absolutely right. Cena busted out some moves in this match. It, it, it's something that we haven't seen since, uh, Punk versus Cena. Like the last few matches those guys had, they just busted out everything and, yeah, Cena's been adding on a move here and there. Like for a while, he was doing the leg drop. For a while, for a while now, he's been doing the springboard stunner. Um, he also had that move that I don't know what the fuck it was. I, I'm questioning whether Owens was expecting it because it clearly threw him off. Uh, but and then it was that sunset flip power bomb dealy in the middle of the ring. But yeah, yeah. I I like the fact that Cena is stepping up his wrestling game so that. I don't know, he doesn't look like a dinosaur compared to Owens when he's busting out moon salts and super kicks. But yeah, it, it's just a great feud all around, and I'm incredibly glad I got to see this match. Yeah, it's just, it was beyond fantastic for, for a match between these two guys. Uh, just watching everything these guys put in the ring was just great. Um, Cena winning, kind of bummed about that. 
but it was a fantastic match, and the end more than made up for it. Mm -hmm. Owens is still blowing guys, are still destroying guys after the match. I'm glad that he's extending that to the main roster here. Um, it, it's just really helping set up the character. You can tell that they're really hoping Owens is going to be the next top heel. If done right. Yeah, for sure. The only thing I don't like about what came of the the post-match segment was when they were rattling off what Owen, what uh, Cena got after that powerbomb on the apron. And it's back contusions, severe muscle spasms, and bruising. I just like how Cole emphasized that last one, which is clearly... <laughs> the most insignificant of those three things, it, I, I, yeah, commentary sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so to move on, New Day versus the Primetime Players. Um, I'm shocked. Primetime Players walked out with the tag team gold. Yeah, I don't know anybody that would have called this one. Um, I think it's far too soon on the New Day's reign, and I wasn't thinking they were going to push this this uh, PTP thing so hard. Now that now that we we've seen this, I think this is the beginning of the end for that team, namely for Titus, because he's I think he's thirty nine. He might be forty. I'm not sure. He's definitely up there as far as athletes go. So. I don't necessarily know how much longer he's going to be with the company. So I can kind of see this as one last hurrah before, you know, he cuts ties, he resigns, maybe retires. I don't know. I don't know how much money he's got built up. But yeah, this just seems like one last swan song before the end. I I don't see that being a swan song. I mean, I, I think he's still got stuff ahead of him. I don't know. I... I think I think it's something that they've wanted to give to the primetime players for a while. Uh, especially before when Abraham Washington was still around. Mm -hmm. um, but and they finally I guess found some way to do it. I don't know what they're I don't know if they're planning on this being a long feud between the two of them, but uh between the two tag you know, tag teams, but I mean I still think I still think both the primetime players have a lot of a lot of miles left to go. Yeah, I could definitely see that um, because Titus still is pretty jacked and yeah, I don't know. It, it it just struck me that they with everything that's happened to them, I it, it's just been my impression that they weren't going to be champs unless it was like one last one last parting gift. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I get that, but I just don't see that I don't see them I don't see it necessarily as being a parting gift, like other people have said. I, I just think it's it's something they want to do to help break, maybe help break up the division. I mean, what a, you? Because if you've got the titles on a face, they've got more heel tag teams anyway. Yeah, that's true. So you know, and looking at NXT, the VOD villains don't seem to be villains. So. <laughs> I think there's a big shuffle around in the tag team division. Yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah. So, moving on to the WWE Championship ladder match. Uh, this match turned out better than I expected, but it ran into a few roadblocks that I expected. That I kind of expected, too. Um, spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. Seth Rollins walked out with the WWE Championship without help from the Authority. Um, this match went on for 35, almost 36 minutes. What, what did you like in this match, Nick? Uh, that, that spot where Rollins took that ladder bump outside, that was, that was pretty sick. Um, I will confess, I didn't watch all that match. I mean, it went on long and like I was going a while without sleep, so I was definitely dozing off during that match just because I, I could not stay awake. But I, I was awake for the ending of the match, and I like how they left room open for a continuation of this feud 
where Am- Ambrose is going down with the title in his hands to right on the impact where Rollins is able to get away from him. Um, yeah, I-, I-, I do like that Rollins finally has a win that cannot be contested, cannot be poo-pooed because, oh, he had help from J&J or Kane or Triple H. I like that he got a win on his own. Um, I did say that I think this would be a the beginnings of a face turn, and I'm kind of questioning that now because I mean, just, just the way he's been carrying himself, where he's, he's still that that basically that dick to everybody, just rubbing his victory in everybody's faces, and the the relationship dynamics just haven't changed with the authority yet. So I don't know. I I want to see him as a face again. It, it, he he's, he's just such a great face champion. I I remember when he got that title down in NXT, and everybody loved it. So. Yeah, I, I may be projecting a little bit still, but I still want to see that. Yeah. Uh, that that would be cool to see. It's great seeing that title be put around his waist um, in the Dusty Clips, since that was in the Dusty era, era of NXT. Yeah. Um, you know it means a lot to him, especially, you know, Dusty passing and... It's just it's just really cool to see all the and it was really cool to see all the NXT crowd uh once you re- recently got to the main roster and their reactions and how sad they were because they you know they worked extensively with Dusty. Mm-hmm. Um that was just really cool to see. Um but yeah, no, the I think the I think the match was phenomenal. I think they found a few points where it just kind of slowed down like Ambrose should not be getting back up. He's taking so much of the abuse. And all of a sudden, he's right back there. Uh, it just, after a while, I, it didn't seem like there was enough back and forth at different points. Uh, it just seemed like Ambrose just got his ass handed to him for a good chunk. Yeah. And then, you know, but then he'd come back. Like, I get that's kind of the character, but it just seemed a little off balance. If if I guess it'd be the, it would be the term. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was money in the bank. Um, I, I think it was a good show. Uh, you know, the ladder match was good. Uh, the Divas match was all right. Kevin Owens, John Cena was good. It was fantastic. New Day versus primetime players was good for a tag team match. Uh, even though they had half the time the Divas did. And then, you know, a 35 minute ladder match. I mean, overall, I think it's a pretty solid, solid card. Yeah, absolutely. I I couldn't disagree if I wanted to, and I definitely don't want to. <laughs> uh, the one of us who had the most picks correct on this show was neither one of us. It was actually Garvin. Garvin got four right. Nick, you had three right out of the seven, and I only had two. Um, yeah, definitely not an yeah. easily callable card. Especially when we thought it would be. I mean, Money in the Bank, obviously, there's so many guys in the match, they could always throw a wrench in there. Mm. Uh, you know, we screwed up the kickoff match, but we all did. Um, you missed out on the Divas match. I missed out on the Intercontinental match. I missed out on Kevin Owens Cena. But like I said when I made that pick, I was picking with my heart, not with what textbook says. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just the number of matches absolutely... where we all picked unanimously and they just completely went in the other direction is it is a little staggering. Yeah. Uh, but looking at our stats since WrestleMania 1, Nick, you are still in the lead. 27 out of 43. Uh, I'm at 23 out of 23 and Garvin's at 20. So there's really not a huge difference. No, it's uh, it's in, still pretty close. Numbers here, and and I'm starting to th- I'm looking at these numbers. I'm starting to think that maybe uh, they weren't updated. <laughs> the hmm. uh, possible forty th- only forty three matches. I don't know, because I mean, well, you only got one more than me in this time around. We'll we'll have to check with Garvin because yeah, he I, keeps those stats. I think I was sitting on. Uh, uh, I think I was sitting on six 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 as my record last time we recorded. Oh, oh, okay. 
So then, yeah, then we have uh, we have the map difference. Uh, just some of the active feuds coming out of uh, Money in the Bank: Orton versus Sheamus, Rollins versus Ambrose, King Barrett versus King What's Up, Kevin Owens and John Cena going uh, going now looks like the U.S. Championship will be the prize. Page and all the divas, and then Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. And New Day versus Primetime Players. So, I mean, there's a lot of interesting uh, interesting content here. Uh, the one that actually excites me the most is Page versus... the uh, Garvin List is Page versus Divas. Um, if all those girls are going to turn their backs on Page, I fully expect that uh, this is where we're going to see Charlotte come up, if not somebody else as well, from NXT. To give Paige the support? I think they're going to hold that off a little bit because on Raw, there was one person that was noticeably absent and that was that was Natalia. And during the Divas match on Money in the Bank, she was the only one really commenting on the match and saying anything that remotely sounded like uh, Paige's rallying cry to stand up to the Bellas. So I think we might get Paige and Natty going up against the Bellas for at least a little bit. Well, that'd be a good... I, I think that would work. Uh, I'd like to see Natty work some more, because she's a solid worker. Mm-hmm. It's just, for some reason, they just... I don't know if it's her mic skills or what, but they just kind of drop the ball with her. Yeah, they've they've more than dropped the ball. I don't know if Vince has some long-standing grievance against the Hart family, but the gimmicks that she's had yeah, have just been terrible over the last several years. Oh, come on, man. Farting Natty was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, not so much. No, <laughs> not so much. But no, I, I think if they're calling NXT uh, Divas up, I, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, Charlotte makes a lot of sense. Um, she's got the name. She's definitely got the skills to back it up. And yeah, it, it's it's totally in line with Paige's message of making the division about I, it's more of an underlying message, I think, but making the division more about wrestlers, not who you're married to, which I thought was a solid line to bring up in that little promo there. Yeah, definitely. Any of any uh, other feud that's exciting you right now? Oh, let's see. Um, I think that about does it as far as I can recall. Um, Barrett versus Truth it is kind of interesting to me. Um, I'm kind of suspecting that Barrett put paid to that last night when he took out Truth and made that definitive claim about, oh, the crown is prestigious. I had to earn this title, and you're making a mockery of it. Which, I mean, take from that what you will. But if this does continue, I definitely wouldn't complain. Um... I've kind of taken to calling it War of the Proses because they both got catchphrases. Boom versus What's Up. Um, if this does continue, I'm definitely... I don't know what color roses they would have, but yeah, I'm definitely in King What's Up camp. Well, then you gotta get Kofi involved because his his was boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, he's clear, he would clearly make a better king than Barrett because uh, multiple booms, always better than just one boom. No matter how many O's you throw in it. I can't believe we're, we're using this as criteria. <laughs> okay. Uh, looking forward to Battleground. Uh, we'll be discussing that on FTPW 275 on the 14th of July. Uh, the matches that are currently on the card right now are, are all speculated as Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. Unless that was locked. And I might have had a brain fart on that. I believe they did lock it on uh, Raw. Okay, so that that's official. And Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. Uh, any comments on uh, on this development before we uh, head over to TNA? Um, if this, oh, first of all, I, I again, I'm absolutely looking forward to Reigns versus Wyatt. The promos should be very interesting over the, over the next few weeks. And I think they'll put on a good match as well. Rollins versus Lesnar. I'm not entirely sure that this match is going to stand as is. 
because obviously Rollins is going to do his damnedest to weasel his way out of it. And I don't know. Lesnar's definitely do a rematch. And I think that would be a very interesting match just to see them go head to head one on one rather than an aborted cash in by Rollins or, yeah, just an, just any other ambush style attack that he's had against Lesnar. Um, I, I just think they've got something a little extra up their sleeves as far as this goes. Um, I also kind of wonder if the Owens versus Cena match for the U.S. title isn't being slated for B- Battleground as well. Is I, I figure five mu- five weeks, excuse me, should be enough to recover from uh, back contusions, severe muscle spasms, and bruising. Yeah, I would think so. Um, yeah, I think this is this is going to be an exciting. I think the that I mean, yeah, that should be locked for for the show. And I think that Lesnar Rollins is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Well, if, like you said, you know all the all the. Uh, essentially sniper shots that Rollins has taken against Lesnar. Mm. Uh, and Lesnar's going to be... It was like, look at that Raw after WrestleMania where Lesnar was all fired up to tear him apart. Yeah. And the crowd was on fire. I I am so excited for more moments like that. That's what's really got me excited about this match. Um, I can't wait. It's it's going to be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait for their styles to mix. And really, if... Lesnar wants to show off. I'm hoping for another shooting star face plant. <laughs> would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, so Battleground looks like it could be fun. And uh, so let's talk just briefly on some TNA. With Slammiversary coming up, um, news comes out that uh, King of the Mountain is returning at Slammiversary. And... Uh, we're getting a new X Division champion this week. It's Low Key versus Grado versus T Gray Uno. I mean, this is a triple threat that I never would have expected. Mm-hmm. So, Nick, who do you have in the in that triple threat? I think this is T Gray Uno's time to shine because I, I've been informed uh, from YouTube commenters that this that his win in the qualifying match is not his first win in TNA. Um. He had a couple tag team wins with Sonata, and uh, there was some singles match he won early on. But it's definitely the first in a long, long time. And, yeah, it's just the fact that I I am absolutely certain that this was his first time speaking. It seems like they're putting a spot, more of a spotlight on him. And, yeah, to me, it just makes a lot of sense that Tigre Una will be the new X Division champion. I Sadly, I don't see that honor going to Grado yet. Um, it's... For one thing, it's far too soon for him. We just haven't seen enough of him on TV yet. And low-key, I don't think they would... I don't think they'd give it to him. Not when they just took it off of Kenny King. So I think the BDC is going to be titleless for a little while. Okay. See, and I'm thinking it's going to be low-key only because he's had a... They want to have a little nostalgia factor in the X Division. (laughs) And... He's definitely nostalgia factor. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, he, he he's been in and out of the company a number of times over the years, so and he's he's usually pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. So that that would be my pick. Sorry, Grado. Uh, <laughs> moving on, King of the Mountain. Uh, how do you feel about it returning at Slammiversary? It's definitely interesting. I. I figure this will be used to determine a new number one contender. Um, the I'm I'm uncertain because obviously EC3 is the number one contender right now, and right now EC3 isn't scheduled to go up against Angle until after Slammiversary on July first, and yeah, naming a new contender before the original first contender actually has his match doesn't make sense. I'm I don't know why they'd have this match otherwise, but yeah, I I don't know. That's the only thing that makes sense to me and with the booking, it doesn't make sense. What if it's a, going to be an X Division Championship qualifier? Ooh, you know, number one contender for X Division. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's also very possible. I would I I would dig that. To me, that could be a lot of fun. 
as awkward as the King of the Mountain match is. <laughs> so you, for those who are uninitiated, what happens is you get, what, six guys in the ring. Everybody brawls. If you pin somebody, the pin receiver goes into what looks like a phone book, uh, phone box or a uh, phone booth. There we go. Sorry, it started slipping a little Doctor Who there, but it's a, it's a small <laughs> cage and they stand in there for two minutes or is it five minutes? It's two minutes. Yeah. That's two minutes. Okay. Minor so penalty. it's a minor penalty and, and, uh, they have to go in there, but then the person who got the pin is now qualified to not climb up and pull the belt down from something, but they have to get the belt and hang it on a hook. And it's just really awkward because why, I mean, okay, you pinned everybody and you put them in the box that so gives you less guys to have to deal with to climb up and hang the belt. Why, why hang the belt? Just to try and be different? To me, to me, that's the most awkward part. Not ca- I mean, the penalty box is awkward enough, but to have to go hang a belt? It's like a reverse ladder match or a reverse cage match kind of thing? I don't yeah. know. It just seems very, very awkward to me. Yeah, I don't know what Jarrett's obsession was with reversing every match type he could think of, because you had the reverse Battle Royal, then you have this, and I don't know, it, it is weird. I'm surprised there's never been a match where you had to climb inside the cage in order to win, but... <laughs> um, Climb on top of the cage to win, I mean, Homicide did that. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, so I I find the match to be a little cumbersome, but it should be interesting. Uh, I I'm expecting it to be an X division match. Yeah, that makes a lot a lot of sense when I think about it. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about in TNA, Nick? Um, I mean, me and Garvin covered it pretty extensively on Fans Talk TNA. You guys could check that out as well. Um. I, I am kind of interested in, in seeing where the knockouts division goes. Um, aside from the questionable tease of a laundry pillow fight, Brooke versus Taryn kind of interests me because Taryn's been shining in the, in this new role. And Brooke is a solid worker. Uh, she's, she's definitely a far cry from what she used to be. And any match between those two should be pretty good. Throw Kong in the mix as as they will be for Slammiversary, and I don't know if we'd see a lot of Brooke and Terran teaming up to try and neutralize Kong, but yeah, it, it's a pretty interesting situation, I think. Okay. Cool, cool. So, Nick, the question now remains: You ready for win fail? I am. Women wrestlers aren't getting paid. Why do you do a job? Here is your win. You do any (laughs) job, any job, and fail. Is to fucking get paid of the week. All right, let's go to win fail. All right, Nick, what is your win of the week? Easily, Owens versus Cena. Um, even despite the fact that Cena won. I think Owens had the last laugh. It was a great match, regardless of match result. And I look forward to the... uh, I don't know if imminent is the right word for it, but the upcoming rubber match between those two. Also, uh, sub-win to the return of Crimson on TNA. Uh, I, I don't know if this is going to be anything resembling a permanent return, but just seeing him back for... Guessing him back was a pretty neat spot. Cool. Uh, my win of the week is going to echo yours, Cena Owens too. That was just an amazing match. Both guys did some tremendous work. It kept you guessing. It was entertaining. And it was a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it wasn't... It was just... This is what we want to see week in, week out. Obviously, you know, it's a pay-per-view. We don't need pay-per-view quality matches every week because if we did that, then nothing is special on the pay-per-view. But, I mean, just a great match like this periodically is fantastic. 
Uh, what is your fail of the week, Nick? Uh, I, I just got to give the fail to life in general with Dusty passing. Um, I, I realize he's definitely getting out there in years, but yeah, death ended that push too soon. Uh, definitely agree with that one. Um, yeah, the loss of Dusty Rhodes is a big one to the business. Uh, the influence he had on so many companies, TNA, WWE, uh, AWA, I just, every, everywhere he worked, uh, WCW, uh, just everywhere. I mean, the amount of lives he touched and the amount of just passion he had. And for that to be gone now, is just, it's such a bummer. Yeah, just how um, influential he was week, on an NXT, it's, I don't know if it'll be the same anymore. Like, Matt Bloom and, um, I forget her actual name, Sarah Del Rey, like, those folks down there are definitely phenomenal trainers, but as, as much as Triple H is in charge of NXT, in charge of talent development, Dusty was definitely the guy down there, and I don't know how... no. We'll definitely have to notice a change there, but yeah, I just don't know how how that's going to work. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. Uh, my fail of the week, though, is going to be Seamus. Um, Seamus winning the money in the bank. Uh, I don't think it was needed. Um, but if you know, if it's going to give us Seamus versus Lesnar, that's intriguing. It's the only thing I think could that could be intriguing with Seamus. Uh, but that's coming from a guy who's not a fan of Seamus. So there you go. Uh, final thoughts. Any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, no, I mean, maybe I should have saved my fail for, for this, but yeah, it's aside from that. Not really. Okay. And with that, it is time to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Let's continue the conversation on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or wherever you are. Uh, we're, give us a rating and reviews wherever you can. Definitely spread the word about us because we need your we need more people to check us out and uh, converse with us because we love to talk wrestling. Um, oh, you know what? My I one final thought, uh, and it's a win. Win to Garvin uh, for picking up NXT tickets. He and I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk, but if you've checked out our Facebook page, not the Facebook group, but the Facebook page, uh, we have videos there, the 10 bell salute for, for Dusty and the intro of Enzo Amore and Big Cass at the NXT Cleveland show, the main event of the NXT Cleveland show, at least uh, the final seven minutes of it, where it was a fatal four-way between Balor, Owens, uh, Breeze and and uh, Joe Samoa Joe, and Joe. Yeah, why? How could I? How could I forget Samoa Joe? <laughs> uh, you know, it was a tremendous match too. That's the thing. Uh, fantastic time. Uh, sweating my nuts off, but great people, great show. Um, and for some reason, they said the number one contenders for the NXT Tag Team Championships were Mojo Raleigh and Zack Ryder. Uh, let's see if that's going to, that was, let's see if that they lost. So maybe they're no longer number one contenders, but I would hope so. Uh, the Zack Ryder, the Zack Ryder intro is also up on the, on the page. Um, because I'm a Zack Ryder fan. I said it, (laughs) it's, it's what it is. Uh, so yeah, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, the Google pluses, uh, rate us on iTunes or wherever you can, wherever you're finding a place to rate us. Uh, for Nick and myself and everybody who comes to this show week in, week out to talk about wrestling. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Later, guys.